Hi guys, Mamie here, and we're going to be working on another card today, and I'm doing a series. I'm so excited because I got the Stampers Anonymous Tim Holtz Crazy Dog stamp set that everybody is in love with, and I thought I would just do a series because I wanted to use all of them. So I'm going to be using just some of these elements. I'm not really sure yet which ones I'm going to end up using, but I'm going to be doing a lot of masking, so I'm going to create a center focal point here with this uh, die, die cut circle as a mask. And I'm going to just start stamping all of the elements around that circle. This way it'll create a focal point in the middle for the dog that I put in there. And so I'm just stamping the food bowls and some bones, the tennis balls, and I think that's it. I think the leash was too big, so I'll use that for another project pretty quick. And um, so I'm just stamping all these around, trying to fill them in as best I can where they look sort of organic and, and not like, uh, not very symmetrical. And so I'm stamping all of these with VersaFine ink. I always say VersaMark, but it's VersaFine. And it's a waterproof ink, and it is great to use for your Zig Clean Color Real brush markers. And that's what I'm going to be using today. And I'm using this on Bristol Smooth cardstock, which is fantastic for the Zig markers. And I'm going to be masking the stamps with this Inka Dinka Do stamping masking paper. And so you just stamp as many masks as you need on the white side. And then you just cut them all out and you can use those to cover up your stamped images so that you can ink blend or you can do layering, stamp layering or whatever you'd like to do. But um, I'm going to do a little magic here real quick and snap my fingers. Ta-da! And I've got all the masks here cut out and ready to go. Now this masking paper is very low tack in my opinion and uh, too low tech. It doesn't stay on very well at all. But since I ordered so many packages, I think I had three packages in order. It wasn't very expensive, but I'm going to use them all up. But I probably won't use them again for small elements like these because they just lose their sticky really quick. And it's probably because I put my fingers all over them, but I just would hope they would stick a little bit better. I know a lot of people use the post-it note paper, so I might try using that um, after I've used all this up. So we'll see. But anyway, I'm going to be doing some ink blending, and that is why I am masking all the elements and leaving that mask in the middle. Uh, this is the Tumbled Glass Distress Ink. And so I'm just going to start ink blending all the way around. I'm not, you don't have to be like very perfect with your blending because the Bristol is very smooth and, and the blending just glides across it very nicely. But as you can see, the masking paper just kind of flops off a lot of the time. So what I'll do is I'll just pounce my um, blending tool on the paper, just kind of pounce it around. Since I'm not doing like ombre or anything like that effect, I'm just uh, putting down some color. It doesn't have to be uh, a very hard thing to do. You just pounce it right on and it'll look just fine. The actual, actually the little bit of texture makes it look even better. So it worked out all right. So now I'm taking off all the masks for the reveal and I just love how it looks. I just love this part. Um, Sometimes it'd be, it's cute whenever people just leave them not even colored. Um, maybe I'll do that later on, but um, I'm going to color everything today. So I'm using my stamping tool here. This is the Misty. And I'm just putting my dog, centering him. And I just, I didn't want to, I, this is my first time using the stamp, so I didn't want for him to get the stamping to be messed up and then be stuck with it. Um, because you do, you can't see through these stamps, so it's good to put them on the Misty, and that way I can stamp it, take a look at it, and see if it looks good, and fortunately, it did look good, and the Bristol Smooth cardstock is very easy to stamp on. It's not like watercolor paper, so if you are using watercolor paper, I definitely think you should use either the Misty or um, a stamping tool. 
So now we're going to jump right into the coloring. These are my Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers, and I have cut out little sticker paper and colored the each individual color and placed the sticker on top and covered that in nail polish. That way they'll stay on very well, and I can know what colors I'm using that are true to the color. So now I'm just giving a wash of the light gray. I, I'm not sure the names of, of all of these markers. Um, if you'd if you'd like to know the names of the markers let me know and i'll start putting those including those in there but this is just the lightest gray i'm going to scoot in here a little bit so that you can see the coloring a little bit better and i'm not sure what all these dogs are uh obviously it doesn't really matter it can be whatever kind of dogs you want it to be um, i felt like this looked a lot like a schnauzer that we had um so i'm just going to color it as such and gray is an easy color because and schnauzers are easy to color because they don't have very many different colors uh, they're really just gray or you know they're usually just one solid color whatever color they might be and so I'm just darkening up um, the areas that would be darkest uh, I'm having the light source kind of come from the center top right kind of area it doesn't really really matter I'm just trying to be a little bit consistent so I'm using the darker gray to fill in the areas that would be shaded um, and these stamped images have great little areas already that show you the shading so it's really fantastic and then here I'm coloring in the nose being sure to leave a little bit of a highlight there on the nose in which I'll cover up with the light gray and I'll go over it later with a water brush pen to pull away a little bit of the color and here I'm just darkening everything up it's really really easy and the blend is very good I'm not using a water brush very much today because I wanted the color to be pretty saturated I want it to be pretty dark and uh, the water brush is really good for um, a lot of layering but I didn't I was already doing so much coloring that I didn't want to do a lot of layering so I'm doing that I'm keeping the coloring quite simple today um, because there is so many images that I have to get through and uh, if you like to see the coloring let me know but if you prefer just to skip over it let me know um, I can do some videos with and some videos without it doesn't matter so in this series I'm gonna be coloring probably all the dogs so you can let me know what you'd like to see or which animal you'd like to see or which animal which dog you would like to see so now I'm just doing some blending getting the darkest areas a little bit darker and I think he looks pretty good. We'll fill in the shadows now under his feet. And I will use my water brush here to just kind of um, blend that out a bit. Now I'm going to fill in the eyes with a little bit of blue. It really helps the eyes pop. It gives them a lot of dimension. So I'm putting in a little bit of that blue. It's a very, very light blue. I'm going to zoom back out here. color in his little coat his little collar and the reds in this 48 pack um had i do, had i could i do it all over again i would have gotten the um the larger pack because there's only two reds and they're they don't really go to what to go together that well um so i but i think i think it'll work just fine i just kind of wish there was more of a red color that kind of matched each other since I am just using the zigs together instead of water blending it. So now we're gonna get started on the bowls. 
and I'm just putting a little bit of darker color around the outsides of the bowls, the outside corners, to give it the appearance of being round. So you put the darker colors on the outside corners. And you leave the lighter area in the middle, the front middle area, if you'd like for that to have a little bit of a highlight. Now I'm filling in the bones. In the bones, I'm using this really light, um, pale skin tone. It's a really great color for the bones, so. I haven't colored any people yet, I don't think, with the zig, so. I think I might have colored a couple of small images, but I just got them a couple of days ago, so I'm really excited to see how all the markers work and, and things like that. So I'm just adding some uh, shadows to some, some of the smaller creases in the bone just to give them some dimension. But you really don't have to do a whole lot. And in an image like this, uh, where the focal point is um, the, main, the main concern, you really don't have to worry so much about the outside elements. And now I'm coloring in the other bowl with the same idea, just a little bit darker on the outside, a little lighter in the middle. And since the reds are so similar, it doesn't lend itself really to having a highlight. So on this bowl, I kind of learned to um, not bring the color all the way across because the, uh, the reds kind of blend too well. There's not very much contrast. So I'm taking my water brush, taking it to the middle to give it a better highlight on this bowl and I'll do the same on the other bowl but this is the things you learn as you go go along using a new medium And I love the disheveled look of these dogs. I, it's just so funny. He, he, he's done all of these animals just so original. But they all, like I said, look a little bit disheveled. So they're, they're, uh, there's so many different things you could use for these dogs. Like just so many different sentiments you could pair up with it. Um, it doesn't come with any sentiments. So you will have to use either another... Uh, sentiment stamp that you have by Tim Holtz or or just any any that you have I would have liked to have seen at least a couple of sentiments on some of these because it would kind of match the uh, picture the pictures of the dogs the images but um but that's okay I was able to find some that went pretty well and now I'm filling in the dog food and the tennis balls so the tennis balls I'm filling in with this really bright yellow. And um, I played tennis in high school, so I know that tennis balls are very, very bright yellow. And almost, sometimes they can almost have a little bit of a tint of green, of like a neon green. And so I'm going to add a little bit of neon green throughout the tennis balls too, just for a little bit more realism, I guess. This is a really light green, so it's really, I really could have skipped it all together, but I can't just leave well enough alone. And now I think I am just fixing that first red bowl. I had saturated it pretty good, so it came out. It bled just a bit. But to take care of the bleeding, you just take your water brush and swipe over it a couple times and maybe even dab it with a towel so that it doesn't bleed anymore. But there's, there's just so much you can do to save your watercolor pieces. It's great.
Now I'm just adding some dimension to the uh, dog food with a darker brown. Now I'm adding some shadows to all the elements in the background. It just kind of makes them come forward or gives them a little bit more dimension so they look a little bit more 3D when you add a little bit of a shadow. And since my sun is coming from like the top right, I'm putting the shadows kind of to the, to the left of the images, sort of. It doesn't have to be perfect, just as long as you have a little bit of a shadow, it really lends itself to having more dimension. What do you guys think? Does that, do you see the shadow? Does it, do you think it helps? Maybe I'm not going dark enough. I'm always afraid to go too dark, but um, I think the shadow helped a little bit. I probably could have gone a little bit darker maybe, but after all this work, I definitely didn't want to mess something up. So now I'm using a stamp from another stamp set from another one of my favorite companies that have really, really cute dogs as well. And the stamp says rough day and I think it just goes perfect with this these disheveled dogs so I may use it the same sentiment more than once um, it could be for uh, somebody just uh, there's a lot of people you know that are have that have surgery or you know that um, something just doesn't go their way that day or something you know something small like that um, you definitely don't want to hurt somebody's feelings by if they had a really horrible thing happen and you send them something that says rough day you don't want to send it to them but something small just to let them know uh, you know that you are supporting them and you're thinking about them and so I decided after I'd already put down some of the the uh, adhesive on the card on the top folding card here that I wanted to add a little bit of glitter tape on the side just to I don't know just give it a little bit more glamour and at first I was like oh this card would be great a great masculine card right but then I added the glitter <laughs> Anyway, here's the final card. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that you'll like and subscribe to my channel to get more of my videos. And you can also find me at onejoyousskip.com. Thanks and have a great day.